there is few types of curses the first one that's common one and that's the generational curse a generational curse is when a curse gets passed on from one generation to another a statistic says if your father was an alcoholic you have a 10 times higher likelihood of becoming an alcoholic I remember reading a story this today actually about a correction officer who was working in a prison and he noticed he met this man who was in prison because he molested his own child and after a few months of praying for this man he finally led him to Jesus Christ and this man repented of his sins and he mentioned how his own father molested him and he mentioned how his father was molested and and this correction officer who was a Christian he says I can't believe such a disgusting thing that happened in this family and he says my idea that generational curses are not real he said it was shattered into pieces by meeting this family sometimes we bury our head in the sand and we pretend the reality doesn't exist but the Bible says iniquity of the fathers get visited up to four generations there is possible to be in a family where there is a curse and it passes on from one family to another there is a story about two famous families and these families lived about a hundred years ago one of them is Jonathan Edwards and the other one is uh, Max Jukes and it's, it's a long story about how they got uh, circulated too but I'll just read difference between their families you can see on one the guy who looks like a priest he represents the Edwards and the other guy represents Jukes. Most of you heard this. I'm going to repeat it for you. 300 out of 1,200 of this guy's descendants. So one out of four, they were very, very poor. One out of four died in infancy from lack of good care and lack of good conditions. 50% of women, no 50 women, they lived in a very promiscuous like prostitution lifestyle. 400 men and women were physically wretched early by their own wickedness. Seven were murderers. 60 had hab were habitual thieves who spent on average 12 years each in lawlessness. 130 were criminals who were convinced more than once of a crime. Now compare around the same time this man's family, Jonathan Edwards, one of them was, was a U.S. vice president. Three of them were U.S. senators. Three of them were governors. Three of them were mayors, 13 were college presidents, 30 were judges, 65 were professors, 80 held public office service, 100 were lawyers, 100 were missionaries, pastors and theologians. Definitely in this family and in this family there were few people who were doing good but the most of the family had really bad and the other one most of the family was doing really good. Generational curses are real we see that in the Bible like David's family and then we see the Saul's family where it seems like a crooked tree and the other we see where somewhat established tree where people follow God's path and God's will and God wants to break generational curses and release generational blessings upon our life can I get a witness in this place the second curse that is predominant is called a caste curse a caste curse is when somebody pronounces a curse on you when you did them harm the scripture says curses without a cause don't stick meaning if somebody curses you if somebody hires a witch to pronounce a spell on you but you did no harm to that person those curses they will never stick but if the curses are pronounced on you and you caused somebody pain those curses will stick if you're not a follower of Jesus and there is no protection on your life of the blood of Jesus then those curses stick. It's important to understand that cast curses affect people who are casting them as well as those directed to. Cast curses don't just work for those who receive them, it's also for those who send them. I remember hearing a story of a young man who uh, wanted to punish a girl because she didn't like him. He liked the girl and she didn't like him back. So he went to a witch doctor. Now it's not dominant today where people go to witch doctors if they want to get at somebody. We do a lot of other nastier things today. But in those days people would go to a witch doctor. He went to a witch doctor and he said, I want to cast a spell on her. Meaning I want to destroy her life. The witch doctor of course asked for some money. He gave her some money and then she created a lock and she says, I want you to pronounce all the nasty things you want to happen in this girl's life. 
So he, he go ahead, just open up his mouth and just let it let it out. Said all that I want her to do da, 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 this bad. I want her to be sick. I want her to to die. I want her to have this and that. He said that, and the witch locked the lock and threw the lock in the river and the key somewhere else. And exactly everything this man pronounced became real in this girl's life. Until a few years later, everything he pronounced on her life started to happen in his. He came to church asking God to change his life. And the prophecy was spoken to him saying, there is a lock and that lock is the cause of all of your problems. He says, which lock? And the prophet revealed, he says, a lock where you destroyed someone's destiny, you cursed somebody and that curse is now working against you as well. The Bible says to us as Christians, don't curse your enemies, bless them. Because everything you send their way is coming back at you. Some of you saw the video, take a look at this uh, video. Uh, you most of you saw this, it's karma at its best. Um, pray for her it's like curses <laughs> you release it and it comes back right at your face you hit somebody or you want to destroy the milk or you want to steal something and you run you hit something else you want to hit the horse well the horse gets you back you want to hit some elderly people or this what happens you want to hit that innocent animal? You want to hit a sign? Well the sign hits you back. That's exactly how received curse, curses, cast curses work. Anytime you feel obligated or somebody hurts you, somebody causes you harm and you say, you know what? I wish they'll drop dead. I wish somebody will do worse to them. I wish they break up. I wish they will be sick. Remember, you're sending a ball at the wall. It will hit them. It will hit you back. You can't throw mud in somebody's face without getting your hands dirty. Cast curses work all the time but they many times they backfire on the people sending them not just the people receiving them. A third type of curse is a earned curse. It's a curse that we draw upon our life by indulging in rebellious ways against God. The first time curse was mentioned in the Bible was when Adam rebelled against God. It's interesting when Adam disobeyed God, God didn't threaten him with hell. A curse came upon the earth. A curse came upon their family. And as a result we see two children. No one else in the world and one child kills another one. That's a disaster. That's a curse on the family. We see Adam being kicked out of paradise because of the curse. Nowhere in the Old Testament we see God promising take people to heaven if they obey Him. But God says if you obey me I give you a blessing. If you rebel against me God didn't say I'm gonna send you to hell in the Old Testament. He says hell is gonna be unleashed in the form of a curse. Curses are real. And when we step on the territory of sin guys what we do is we draw like a magnet a curse into our life and it begins to work and it begins to destroy our life. I remember hearing a story of a man who really wanted to get married but either he was not good looking or didn't have a personality but he just didn't have a luck and he had this particular girl he was so fascinated by but she just wouldn't even give him a time of the day and so he decided to go and use spiritual means to manipulate her and so he went to some lady who used a charm on him and she told him if you take this soap and you bathe yourself and then you go where she is she will like you. He paid for soap and it was a charm. It was a spiritual manipulation. It was demonic. So he took that soap, washed himself in that soap and he went in and the girl out of nowhere started to like him. He said, man this works. Went and got more soap until he proposed to that girl. Kept washing himself in this charm of soap to keep getting this girl and eventually they got married. After a few months of marriage the soap stopped working. And the girl realized she married the craziest guy on this planet and what she did is she first burned his clothes then she burned his house and then she wanted to burn him and that's when he brought this crazy girl to church saying she is crazy as prayer was being offered for them the pastor of the church who God uses supernaturally he looks at him and he says the problem is not the crazy girl he says you're the crazy guy he says you went to the devil to get her. 
and you used manipulation through witchcraft and through spells to get her and now what happened is you got her the devil's ways and the devil gave you one thing but with another hand he took what your life depends on he says you're the one that needs deliverance not her and after he prayed for her and he prayed for him they received deliverance and God restored their marriage and they still stayed together and God gave them a second chance you can't go to the devil for help and expect not to get a curse with it when we step on the Satan's territory we draw a curse into our life when we walk with God we draw a blessing into our life can somebody say amen Uh, I didn't know my mom. Um, she came to the uh, United States when I was two years old and uh, one of my biggest dreams, uh, as you can tell, was to see my mom for the very first time. Hello, my name is Eder. Um, I'm from Guatemala. I came to United States eight uh, years ago. As you guys can imagine, it was uh, one of the biggest excitements and uh, one of the best moments in my life to see my mom for the fir very first time. Um, at the same time all this was kind of tough for me and for her because we didn't know each other we couldn't connect connect at the beginning and it was a little bit tough for both of us i moved out i had uh, no friends i didn't know any english i saw a bunch of uh, white people uh, playing soccer and uh, one of my biggest passions is soccer the only problem was that i didn't know how to tell them that i was that I wanted to play with them. After that, they invited me to a home group. That moment right there changed my life here in the United States. I met uh, the one that is my wife today. Her name is Tatiana. I, she was living in New York. So I decided to go to New York. My name is Tatiana. I'm from El Salvador. I live in New York. And then I met the one that is my husband right now. And uh, we got married over there after a few months. We decided to move to Tri-Cities. We started having some uh, problems, so I uh, contact the one that is our pastor, Vladimir. He said that we needed to come to, to church. So we came a few times, and then I started to like it. And um, so we were, we were coming together, and you know, we were still having those problems. But I knew that you know, God was going to you know, work with us. I had a problem with gastritis like, for years. And uh, it was December, I remember, that we were doing something that we wanted to leave all the bad things in the past for that year. And we had to write it down on a paper. So I had this gastritis. So uh, I wrote it down. And a few months after, I was like, I didn't get the pain anymore. So I'm going to try and see if I still get the pain. If I don't get the pain anymore, that means I'm healed. So I tried some uh, drink that is chocolate. Because that used to give me the pain on my, on my stomach. So... Um, and when I drank the chocolate, it didn't give me the pain. So I was like, oh, I'm here. And it's been more than two years already since I didn't have that pain anymore. I got saved. Me and my husband got baptized together. Giving so many blessings from God in uh, you know, such a miraculous way. We were given a car. We are expecting a little baby. Now we are hunger leaders also. It wasn't like this before. We were struggling a lot but thank God for for hungry generation and thank God for every single friend that is uh, close to us now thanks to them we are where we are right now